Well, hello, Internet. Hello, cell tenants and attic dwellers. I'm Scott Dorian. Uh, this week we're doing something a little different. We're going to take a few minutes to talk about and ultimately say goodbye to, in my opinion, one of the coolest clowns in contemporary horror. Uh, before we get into this, there's there are no clips, there's no soundtrack, no montage. Part of the reason for that is because I feel like there will be a lot of those floating around, especially now. Um, but the main part of it is that I'm just not that good <laughs> at uh, editing. So instead, we'll just uh, chill and commiserate. So, House of a Thousand Corpses came out in 2003. I was living in a pretty strict household at the time and was a blind kid to boot. And in Rohnert Park, California, the closest mall is in Santa Rosa, and tried tap-tapping your ass out all the way there. So, it, you know, it wasn't just a matter of sneaking out and buying one like it would have been for most teenagers. There's just uh, all these different logistics that uh, that did not work out. At least, uh, at least not until 2005, when my folks sent me away to a boarding school in Fremont. Then all bets were off. The first thing I did when I got, you know, some time to myself on the town was uh, I hit up the Rasputin Records. I grabbed uh, The Crow, A Cradle of Fear bootleg, Demon Knight, Bordello of Blood, just to give you kind of an idea of what kind of kid I was, and also a House of 1000 Corpses. I was thrilled. So... I took my treasures back to the dorm, popped house into my little Sony DVD player, and left the door open and went out to the common area to grab a Mountain Dew, because really, who the hell wants to watch 10 minutes of trailers? So while I was out there, I, I ran into this girl that I thought was really cute. So I talked to her for a bit. How do blind guys find girls cute? Well, she had a soft, high voice and uh, an accent I was into, and she passed the wrist test. Uh, you watch that uh, Ray Charles movie if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so by the time I got back to my room, the trailers were definitely over. There was a small cadre of dorm staff standing outside my room. They were making very disapproving sort of huffs and tisk sounds. Yeah. Can I get past you? I remember asking one of them, excited to get into my soda and my movie. Explain to me, floor supervisor Robin Burrs told me, more disappointed than angry, why there is a clown on your TV swearing and looking at pornography. <laughs> now, if you've seen the DVD, you know that the menu screen is uh, Captain Spaulding in his chicken spot. He's growing increasingly irritated with the viewer for doing the asshole shuffle and uh, not picking one of these air goddamn options. He then gets frustrated, and he uh, briefly checks out a girly mag and then has some lunch. Now, at the time, I decidedly did not know that, but it was such a ridiculous thing to hear from this stoic old man that I started laughing like really hard. Like uh, It's one of those laughs where when they go, that's not funny! What do you have to say for yourself? You just laugh harder? That's what was going on there. Now, the story really doesn't get any better from there. I got reprimanded for leaving my door open and the volume up. But uh, I had met Captain Spaulding, and I loved the guy. I dressed like him for Halloween that year, and I had that same skull thing that he had on his, uh, on his clothes there. I wore it around for a little bit. You remember that thing? You pull the string, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, I like all the Firefly gang, but uh, the clown was always my favorite. I haven't seen Three from Hell yet, which is weird. Like, it came out, like, just days before, uh, before Sid Haig passed away. So, I'll probably take that one in this Halloween, and... Pour out a little for Mr. Ding Dong. R.I.P. Sid Haig, Captain Spaulding, and uh, I hope there's a huge demand for gas and chicken and mayhem wherever you are. <laughs>